Hey everybody, my name is Nick Stewart. I'm a certified broadcast meteorologist from the American Meteorological Society as well as an operational meteorologist in the state of Iowa. And I've been thinking about starting this series for quite a while, just talking about how I forecast certain weather events, what works, the different products that I use. The beautiful thing about the internet and forecasting meteorology in 2022 at least when this video was shot, is that there is an incredible amount of data out there. I have a bookmarked folder with like a hundred different links and sometimes I lose some of those things and forget about some of those things. So I thought this might be helpful to kind of look at how I forecast a particular event, whether it be flash flooding, severe weather, winter weather, etc. I talk about my experience, the products that I use, and all the different bookmarks that I have. Um, I thought this might be kind of something that would be kind of interesting. Uh, the way these videos will be laid out, it will be starting off with kind of an extended look, basically how things looked, you know, seven days out or more, how I forecast things in the, sh the mid-range, in that maybe two to three day period, and then in the short term, that 12 to 24 hour to 36 hour forecast, just kind of to see how things evolved. And this is kind of the process. So we're gonna start things off with one of the greatest tools out there, the SIPS Analogs, courtesy of the University of St. Louis, St. Louis University. Uh, this is such a great situational awareness tool for looking at things like severe weather and precipitation event, as well as extreme heat and extreme cold. Um, really, really great products here. Um, you can see the links for all of these things will be down below. What we're going to be looking at here is an extended analog looking one week in the future, about 168 hours out. And what we're going to be trying to do is forecast a flash flooding event that occurred on June 24th into the 25th. And so here we are several days out. And what I really like to look at for the potential of flash flooding and big rain events is looking at the um, precip uh, precipitation above or below normal. And you can see it seven days out, there was kind of a hint that there was going to be some potential for above normal precipitation in the upper Midwest, whether it be Iowa, Missouri, potentially Illinois. We're kind of watching that potential there. When you look at the mean precipitation, this can tend to be pretty noisy because it's looking at the top analogs uh, from the GEFS. And you can kind of see these. this event could be in a huge portion of the area, but there's some potential it could be a little bit higher in Southern Iowa. Basically, the higher precipitation amount gives me a little bit more confidence that there'll be some potential in that area. And in terms of our uh, what we're looking at for the potential of flash flooding, we're going to be looking at here, this is the probability of two inches or more precipitation. And you can see there's a bullseye in northern Missouri. So there's some potential that we're going to be watching uh, for heavy rain somewhere in the area. So now let's jump forward. Let's go about the day five forecast. Again, we're going to be looking at Iowa. And what you can see here is as we get a little bit closer to the event, the analogs, this is now the top 15 analogs. Um, this is kind of what it looks like for the mean precipitation. Uh, you can see there's a pretty good bullseye now across the state of Iowa. So now we're starting to get higher confidence that the threat for rainfall, whether it be just thunderstorms or potential heavy rainfall, is starting to favor the state of Iowa. If we look at the probability of two inches of precipitation, and this is, again, kind of the metric I use for, okay, this could be a concern for flash flooding. Keep in mind, again, we're using the GFS here. So the resolution is lower, uh, but it does hint at the potential of heavy rainfall. You got, you know, 20-ish percent chance of seeing two inches or more precipitation. That's pretty high end. I'm still keeping this in the back of my mind of, okay, maybe we'll have to watch this event as we go forward. Let's now jump into the mid-range forecast, kind of that two to three day forecast. Uh, here's a look at the North American model, the three kilometer version. And you can see this model does indicate some threats in Eastern Iowa of one to two to three inches of rainfall. Okay, so some thunderstorms may be a possibility there. When you look at the NAM, um, well, the rain is well off toward north, up towards Minnesota. Likewise, for the GFS, kind of kept the heaviest precipitation to the north, but there's still some rainfall threat in eastern Iowa. Let's jump to the European, a little bit further south, but still shows a widespread area of potentially moderate to heavy rain, an inch of precipitation or more. So I'm looking at the three-kilometer NAM, higher resolution, 
It shows the potential for some thunderstorms and heavy rainfall. A lot of the global models are kind of wider ranging, um, showing the threat potentially further north. But again, going back to the analogs, they were hinting that Iowa may be of concern here. So that's what I'm looking at several days ahead of time. Tends to be analogs and just a lot of models. Let's get to the fun stuff. This is when we get in that 12 to 24 hour period of time. What we're looking at here is the Ensemble Situational Awareness Tool that's uh, put out by the National Weather Service and NOAA. This is a fantastic tool when it comes to forecasting extreme temperatures as well as things like extreme rainfall. What we're looking at here is we're looking at the run that was on June 24th, 12Z. So about 12 to 24 hours before this event really was ripping through the state of Iowa. What we're looking at here is the percentile. I think percentile is the much better thing to look at for, uh-oh, potential. And what we're looking at here is PW, that's precipitable water. And if I didn't uh, talk about this already, uh, this ensemble product is based on the GEFS and the Canadian. So two different models are running uh, to make this ensemble forecast. We're looking at precipitable water. We see that precipit uh, the P watts here at 12Z on Saturday the 25th of June is in the 99.5th percentile for the date. Here's what it looks like plotted. And you can see there is a big field there, big fetch of very high-end P-Watt values. Uh, even this light green is in the 90th percentile. So almost the entire state of Iowa is here. And not only is the moisture content of concern, but the moisture transport, the IVT here. What you're looking at here is how much moisture is being shoved basically into state, the state of Iowa. And when I'm looking at this, that is of concern uh, because it shows high moisture transport. It shows high moisture levels all right in eastern Iowa. So this to me is a very big red flag. And again, this is about 12 to 24 hours out. I can go back even a step further to the 0Z run view table and you can still see the flags are all still here. I went the wrong way. I want to go this way. The flags are all here. It got a little bit um, higher confidence uh, the closer that we got to it. But even still, 24 to 36 hours out, there was still that indication of very high precipitable water values in eastern Iowa. So, okay, now we do know that the models are indicating some potential of rainfall. There's a lot of moisture to work with in the atmosphere. So what is our baseline? In our case, we're still dealing with pseudo drought conditions in eastern Iowa. We're still dealing with dry conditions, not quite moderate or extreme drought like we had, but we're still dry. And when you look at the soil moisture, uh, the anomalies here in the state of Iowa, pretty broad uh, dry conditions across the state of Iowa. So that, when I'm looking at, okay, we could see a lot of rainfall, but the ground is somewhat dry and therefore can likely absorb a good amount of water. So are we going to be dealing with a widespread flash flooding event, an urban flood event? A little bit more questionable. Then when you look at the stream flows, now this map is post the event. Um, so this is not going to be useful, this particular map, to talk about what I saw. But the day before, so Valid Friday, most of the river gauges here in eastern Iowa were in the normal to above normal threshold, not quite extreme. And so the rivers could also handle a good amount of water. So, okay, we could see a lot of rainfall, but maybe the impacts won't be that high because the ground is pretty dry, can absorb a lot of water. The rivers were running a bit lower, if not near normal, and could take a lot of water as well. All right. So now let's talk about the other models. When I'm looking in the very short range, so again, 12 to 24 hours out, individual models become a lot less useful to me. Ensembles really win the date. And one of the best ensembles that exist out there, especially for rainfall and severe weather, is the HREF, hosted by the Storm Prediction Center. And what you're looking at here is the precip uh, precipitation 24-hour LPMM, or basically the localized probability matched mean. Uh, this is, I think, the best product for showing the potential of boom in a scenario. Uh, 
there's a lot of great reading if you want to really know more about what the LPMM does. Uh, there's a whole paper you can read, a lot of awesome information here. Um, but <clears throat> here we go. That's the paper I'm trying to refer to here. But for my case, just we'll just look at this. If you want to learn more, you can read about that. But for LPMM, what we're basically looking at here is a localized area of boom potential for precipitation. And I'm looking at this the morning of. And I'm seeing this bullseye here of the potential of four to five inches of precipitation, another bullseye in eastern Iowa. So a lot of this is screaming to me, okay, we're probably going to have problems for heavy rainfall. At this point in time, the Weather Prediction Center did have a marginal risk for excessive rainfall, but primarily uh, northern Iowa for this. So given all of this information, I went out and put out a forecast for heavy rainfall threat. Tonight into early tomorrow morning, could see widespread one inch with areas of two to three inches of precipitation. What ended up happening uh, was even a little bit higher than I expected. Um, there was a very widespread area of precipitation of three to four to five inches in eastern Iowa, with some pockets even higher than that. And this was a very widespread heavy rainfall event. This was an event that was really keyed in in that 12 to 24 hour window uh, using a lot of different products. And so this was a case where I think using ensembles and just all these other fun tools, it can really help you make these forecasts. We didn't have a lot of impacts. The rivers were able to hold a lot of water. The ground was able to absorb a lot of water. Therefore, we did see a whole lot of significant impact, which I kind of expected given the aforementioned dry ground and lowish to nearish normal river levels. And of course, we'll just look at the satellite imagery because it's kind of fun. Uh, you know, it's kaboom. There's your big old uh, system blown up there. And so that is how I went about and forecast this event. Again, all the tools that I use, I have linked down below. If you found this video interesting, useful, I'd love to hear your feedback. I do want to do this for other weather events, severe weather events, winter weather events. We'll look at um, you know, how I forecast severe weather, how I forecast winter storms, how I forecast blizzards. We'll maybe make this a whole... Um, series of videos but i hope you found this video interesting thank you for watching everybody if you liked it please give it a like if you have some feedback please leave comments down below i'd love uh, to have some feedback on um what you think of this video what i can do better things like that and of course subscribe for more videos in the future thanks for watching everybody have a fantastic rest of your day